Well, hello. Welcome to my kitchen at our cabin. Today I am making scratch biscuits and sausage gravy at my husband's request. And honestly, there's not anything that he could have asked for that would be easier other than a bowl of cereal. Now, scratch biscuits only call for three ingredients. And that is your self-rising flour, I've got some buttermilk, and I've got a stick of butter. I like the taste of the salted butter gives the biscuits, but my grandmother and my mother always used Crisco, and sometimes I will too. Now, Jimmy's mother used vegetable oil. One of my favorite memories with his mother was having her and a few of his sisters over to our house and videoing his mother making her biscuits. Here's a picture of her that night. She's not with us anymore and we miss her so, so much. Now, I am starting with my self-rising flour. Make sure that you use self-rising flour. If you don't, you're gonna have a flat biscuit. This has your baking powder already mixed in, so it's just a extra step that you don't have to take. They've already done this for you. Now, I am using, mm, let's say, a, a little over two cups. I'm not going to make a huge batch of biscuits because it's just my husband and I and there's only so many biscuits that we can eat. And so I think this is going to be just right. Now I'm using a dough bowl. This is what I make biscuits in and if you don't have a dough bowl, then grab a, a big, large bowl that's big enough to handle three to four cups of flour and wide enough for you to work in. I love using a dough bowl. My cousin Tammy has our great grandmother's dough bowl. What a treasure that is. Now I'm taking this butter, and I'm just gonna lay it right in there. And then I've got my pan, I'm making them in. And I'm just going to take this and grease my pan. Such a beautiful day here today. I'll set this aside. Now, I'm going to take this flour and I'm going to start breaking up the butter. And what I want it to do is make about a pea-sized piece. One of our favorite things about being at the cabin is our breakfast. Sitting out on the front porch and enjoying nature. This morning, my husband and I were sitting out on the porch, drinking our coffee, and it's turkey season here. And he has a turkey collar. And he was using it this morning thinking maybe he'd call in a turkey just to watch. And he called in a huge owl. We couldn't believe it. And you know what? That owl mimicked the sound that the turkey caller was making. That wise old owl. I believe that that owl likes to eat turkey as much as us humans do. <laughs> I've got a video of that and I'm including it at the end of this video. So make sure you stay tuned in to watch that. It is so cool. All right, now look at this. My butter is all mixed in. So what I'm gonna do, and my butter was at room temp. I've got a little bit of flour out on the sides there and I'm gonna save that for later. And I'm gonna make a well, just like that. Rub some of this off. And now, I'm gonna take my buttermilk. And you have to kinda eyeball the buttermilk. I'm gonna pour in 
Mm -hmm. I'm gonna start with a half of a cup. Now I may add more. I've got the recipe at the end of this video, but you may have to add just a little bit more buttermilk, and there's times that you might have to add just a little bit more flour. Now I can tell that's gonna get a little dry, so I am gonna add a little bit more. Don't be afraid to get your hands in here and work with this dough. There's no greater tool in the kitchen than clean hands. I am working gently and quickly with this dough. What makes a nice, tender, soft biscuit is not overworking your dough. That is super, super important. And this looks really good. Perfect. I'm going to take a little bit of that flour and just bring it in. And I'm patting these out right in my dough bowl. Now, if I didn't have enough room to work with within my bowl, I would, which I do, have some wax paper and lay my dough on the wax paper. But since I'm not making a big batch, this dough bowl is gonna work perfect. Now let me get this off my hands here. It is messy, but it is worth it. Pat that right in. All right, let me wash these hands and we'll cut these up and get them in the oven. Okay, now, let me grab my pan. If I were at our house, I have a cast iron skillet that's really, really shallow, and I love to make biscuits in that. But here, I don't have one, so I'm just using this small little pizza pan. And I've also got just an old tomato sauce can, and I'm using that to cut my biscuits. I patted this out to about a half of an inch thick. And I'm just gonna pop that out. Mm. Now I've got my oven preheated to 450 degrees. These cook up fast, about 15 minutes, and your oven needs to be really, really hot. I try not to twist. There's a little controversy there about twisting the biscuits. So I don't twist too much. They say that they don't rise as well if you twist them. So just going right in. See that? Mm -hmm. These are going to be so, so good tender and flaky and delicious. Now I could have added some more flour and these would have released a little bit better, but I like them with a little less flour. I think that they taste better. And I'll go in and put this here. You know, biscuits in my family is just a tradition. My mother makes them, my grandmothers made them, my aunts make them, and us kids make them. And it's just something that you learn to do here in the South. If you're gonna get married, you're gonna learn how to make biscuits. That's one of the first things that a grandmother or a mother will teach you when they're sending you off. Now, I've just taken a little bit of the dough and scrunched it together, and that's gonna make another nice biscuit. Now, something my mother used to do, she would take the last little parts of the dough, and she would always make me a special biscuit. And that was my biscuit. And when she put that on the, the biscuits on the table, I made sure everybody always knew that one was mine. <laughs> and in honor of my mother today, I am gonna make a couple of smaller ones. And I'm shaping that 
in the hand there. These are going to be so good. And look at that. Made just the right amount. I always make sure I make a couple of extra biscuits. My husband loves biscuits with sausage gravy, but one of his favorite things in the world after he eats is to take the maple syrup and some butter and pour it all over that biscuit. Now to clean your hands up, just roll it off. At this point, it comes off really easy. It's not very sticky. And there we go. Now, back in the day, my great-grandmother would leave this in her dough bowl, and she would use a lot of flour. So, usually the flour underneath wasn't, it wasn't messed with, and they would take it and put it back in the cupboard and use it the next time. Well, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> that will be cleaned out. Now, you could melt some butter and brush it over the tops of these biscuits, but I've got some of this nonstick butter spray, and this is what restaurants do with their breads. Most of the time, when you get buttered bread and it's shiny on the top, it usually has been sprayed with some of this. Adds a little bit of flavor, it's great color, and it's perfect for things like these. Mmm, those look so good. And I know that my husband is going to want this one in the center. When we got together with his sisters, they would always talk about fighting over the center biscuit. Who got the middle and who got the ends? I don't mind. Just as long as I get a biscuit, I'm good. Now, these are going into the oven. Like I said, they're going to take, mm, those will probably take about 15 minutes. Make sure that that oven is preheated to the temperature that I said, 450 degrees. And allow it to sit a few minutes at that preheated temperature before you add your biscuits. Because you're going to lose a little bit of heat when you open your door. Isn't this great? My toaster oven. Hey, I have learned to cook whatever we want in that toaster oven. When we first bought the cabin a, a couple of years ago, I thought, you know, I'm really gonna miss having a conventional size oven. Well, you know what, I don't miss it at all. If I can't do it in the oven, we do it on the grill and it works out perfect. All right, now it's time to get started on that sausage gravy while these biscuits are cooking. And I'm going to show you how easy and simple that is. Mm. Oh, this sausage is getting nice and brown. Just going to break it up. Now, you want this sausage to render out its fat because you're going to need the fat to make the gravy. See this nice brown bit? You don't want all of it this brown, but you definitely want some nice brown crispy pieces in there. Mm, a nice bite of sausage. Now I've turned my heat down to, I've got it on number two here. And I'm about to add my flour. Now, it doesn't matter if you use a self-rising flour or an all-purpose flour for this. I have the self-rising already out, so that's what I'm going for. Check my biscuits. There we go. Now, the rule of thumb with gravy is if you have about a tablespoon of grease, then you're going to use a tablespoon of flour. And for this, I'm going to start with a good heaping tablespoon. Well, <laughs> in reality, that's probably two tablespoons. And I'm going to sprinkle this all over. This is the way you make any gravy. You're going to start with a roux. 
and I am just going to blend that all in, cover my sausage with the flour, and I want to get a little bit of color on this flour. If I were to add my liquid right now, it would really lump up, number one, and number two, my gravy would have a little bit of a raw flour taste to it. Flour needs to be cooked. It's definitely got flavor. And the more that I let this brown and the nuttier color it gets, the better flavor it's gonna have. This is looking good. If you hear that beating out there, while I'm cooking breakfast, my husband is puppy proofing our front porch. We are about to get a new little puppy, little miniature schnauzer, and her name is Honey, and she will be coming home in about three weeks. And of course, we'll be bringing her to the cabin with us. And our cabin is elevated. We're actually on the Patsagula River. And so every now and then, the river rises, and so we're elevated so that the water can come through. And our porch has some areas that little honey can get out of, and we don't want her to fall. So he's out doing that right now. I know he is going to be hungry when he comes in. Now, I am going to add some water to my gravy. I'm also using whole milk. But this is kind of a half and a half mixture because if I use all milk, I'm going to lose a little bit of the flavor of my sausage. Just go ahead and I'm mixing this up. I'm going to let it get nice and thick. And then I'm going to start adding more. Now we added what? About two tablespoons of flour. And that was about a cup of water. And I'm going to mix it in slowly. That way, I don't get lumps. I'm going to go in with the rest of that water. So mix that up. I still got my heat on a low heat. It's on number two. This is looking good. Now I'm going to start adding my milk. And I think this is going to take about a cup of milk. And again, I'm adding it slowly. Now my milk is cold. And again, I don't want long. So I'm going to turn my heat up just a little bit. I've got it on num between four and five now. And I'm just going to gently stir it and let that heat up. These biscuits are looking good. Now I'm going to grab some salt. If you want to season this with pepper, cayenne pepper, oh, love me some cayenne pepper. But my husband does not. So I'm going to leave that out and I can always add it myself later, some Tabasco sauce if I need it. Now I'm going to take some salt and I'm taking a good healthy pinch of salt. That's probably about a teaspoon, maybe a little bit more. My sausage has salt in it. So I always want to start out with a little because you can add more, but you can't take it out once it's there. Look at how this gravy is thickening up. Doesn't that look good? Now, I'm going to add a little bit more milk. That was probably a half of a cup. And again, I'm going to stir and let this cook until it thickens up. Let's check on our biscuits. 
I'm going to do something that I'm not supposed to do. I'm going to pull them out real quick just so you can see them. How about that? Don't they look delicious? They're not quite ready yet. I would say another two to three minutes, but conveniently, this little piece came off, so I'll tell you exactly how much longer. Mm. You will not believe how good these are. This little piece is perfect, but I know that that middle biscuit needs just a couple of more minutes, so in about three minutes, they'll be ready. Mm. I'm going to go ahead and turn my gravy off. It's the perfect consistency. Just look at that. Mm, those nice brown bits of sausage in there. I have a feeling I am going to have some of my fig preserves with these biscuits. That sounds really good. Okay. These are perfect. Look at how great they rose. Ooh, and that center biscuit is going to be good. You know, since a little piece of that broke off, I don't think it would be right if I didn't continue to eat that one with a little bit of this gravy. So I wanna make sure it's good enough for my husband, you know. So, let me grab a plate here, and let's get this biscuit. Just break that right off. Ooh, they're hot now. Look at that fluffy, tender, perfect biscuit. Now, going to take the top off of it. Oh, look at that, how soft and pillowy that is. I'm almost speechless. Look at this. tender and soft that biscuit is. It just doesn't get any better than that. That is absolutely delicious and my husband has finally stopped hammering out there. So I think that means he's ready for breakfast and he's gonna be right on time. Thank you so much for joining me today. I always enjoy my time with you. Blessings to you and your loved ones. You are definitely a blessing to me. Hey, if you like my videos, press that like button. I love hearing from y'all. See you next time. He's calling turkey, but he's brought in an owl. And the owl is mimicking the sound that the turkey caller is making. And 
And there's Mr. Al. Sounds like Morse code in Turkey language. Maybe it's an alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody have a great day.